Welcome, one and all, to a late show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Good evening, newly minted Reddit millionaires. I'm sure all of you are watching this from the marble bathtubs on your hovercraft. Thanks to your savvy stock market manipulation of GameStop, Tootsie Rolls, Blockbuster Video, and by the time this airs, I'm going to say Crystal Pepsi. More on that later, but first, there's an alarming surge in another American industry, white supremacy. You see, yesterday, for the first time ever, the Department of Homeland Security issued a bulletin warning of a heightened threat environment across the United States due to homegrown violent extremists. All right, okay, look. I understand it's a pandemic. We're baking our own sourdough. Can we please not grow our own terrorists? Because according to the DHS, these artisanal extremists are driven by objections to the presidential transition as well as other perceived grievances fueled by false narratives, as opposed to the person who pushed those false narratives who's fueled by the 20-piece bucket. So, the looming threat of continued intramural violence raises the important question, will the Republican Party finally take a stand against the man who legitimized American fascism? For that answer, we turn to House Minority Leader and man who, oh, damn it, he went down to Mar-a-Lago today. So you're going to suck up to the man who sent goons to kill you? That's not a lack of self-respect. That's a lack of self-preservation, Kevin. That's like turning to the cannibal who's slowly eating you and saying, look, I'm sorry for initially running away from you. I know that cardio really toughened my thigh meat. Here, let me tenderize it with some vinegar and miso. So why the hell is McCarthy doing this? Sources say he is caught between GOP members who think the attack on the Capitol was sedition and the former president's fervent supporters. That's a poor guy. He's caught between a rock and a dumb as a rock. Evidently, the only thing scarier to Republicans in Congress than a violent mob is the fear the violent mob might not like him anymore. According to one party strategist, the ex-president's most loyal fans our voting coalition that matters in this country. They have a voice, and they're going to make that voice heard. Yes, oh, I've heard that voice. They have a clear platform, and they want to hang Mike Pence from it. One congressional Republican who's got the homicidal vote on lockdown is Georgia representative and church camp director describing puberty in biblical terms. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Greene is already infamous for her support of QAnon, but believe it or not, it gets worse because this week reporters unearthed online posts where Green repeatedly indicated support for executing prominent Democratic politicians. Okay, that's probably going to complicate this year's Congressional Secret Santa. Huh, let's see what I get here. Uh, my person gave me a severed horse's head. I thought there was a $25 limit. <laughs> the specifics of these posts are grim and one Facebook post, a Green supporter asked of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, now do we get to hang them? And Green replied, the stage is being set. Players are being put in place. We must be patient. Holy, haul them to the Hague, Batman. She's not even trying to be discreet. At least mobsters use coded language. There's a reason the Godfather doesn't say this. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Because if he does, I'm gonna kill him. And this week, a video surfaced of Green berating one of the Parkland survivors. David, why are you supporting the red flag laws? Do you not know how to defend your stance? Look, I'm an American citizen. I'm a gun owner. I have a concealed carry permit. I carry a gun with, for protection. The best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. Okay, that looks stupid and cruel. But that could just be a false flag operation by Antifa to get us to think that Marjorie Taylor Greene is a child-harassing psychopath. Now, luckily, she won't have much time to yell at the kids about her guns because House Republicans just appointed Greene to the House Education Committee. Oh, come on! The lady who denies school shootings is in charge of the schools? Why not just appoint Surgeon General Joe Camel? Warning, smoking can make you dangerously cool. Now, I hear you asking, sure, Marjorie Taylor Greene has said and done some horrible things on Earth, but it's not like she has any crazy ideas about outer space. First of all, that's a crazy question. And second of all, yes, she does. 
In the midst of the devastating California wildfires of 2018, Marjorie Taylor Greene went on Facebook and claimed that the real and hidden culprit behind the fire was a laser from space triggered by some nefarious group of people. Who started the fire? So far, the only person we can rule out is Billy Joel. He's got an airtight alibi. But claims like these require proof, right? Well, here's Margie's evidence. Oddly, there are all these people who have said they saw what looked like lasers or blue beams of light causing the fires. That's an embarrassing way to admit you've never heard of lightning. And then the socialist lizard men shot jagged laser things out of the cloud. And that angered the sky so much it went roar and the sky wept. And then thanks to QAnon, the sky stopped crying and a rainbow appeared and we shot it with our guns because rainbows are gay. <laughs> the defense rests. So, where do these fictional space lasers come from? Well, according to Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, it could have been a beam from space solar generators. A space solar generator. So, the sun? So, who's to blame here? According to the Honorable Representative Crazy Pants McGee, there are plenty of folks to point and shriek at, including a vice chairman at Rothschild Incorporated International Investment Banking Firm. Wait, the Rothschilds and international bankers controlling high energy weapons in low orbit? What could she possibly be implying? Jews in space! space. 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 Thank you for that report, Mel. But of course, everybody knows it's easy to identify space Jews. They're the ones whose rockets have a bris. Okay, let's get back to that thing I was talking about at the top of the show. You see, chaos continues on Wall Street as hedge fund titans lose billions to Reddit traders running amok. Oh, that's terrible, those poor hedge fund managers. Now might be a good time to invest in whoever manufactures the world's tiniest violins. Here's, here's what's going on. Late last year, two hedge funds started shorting stock in the retail store GameStop meaning they had bet against it and needed it to drop in price for their investments to be successful. You might have seen a similar concept in the movie The Big Short or its popular video game spinoff, Grand Theft Pension Fund. Now, unfortunately for the hedge funds, again, whose business model is, I think your company sucks and I hope you die, small investors started buying the stock, led by something called Wall Street Bets, a popular, juvenile, foul-mouthed Reddit page. So... A Reddit page. And here's what happens. Reddit has a lot of gamers who have a soft spot for GameStop, which isn't in great shape as a company. And when Wall Street Bets noticed that hedge funds had taken a large short position in GameStop stock, they decided to punish the Wall Street big boys and launched a coordinated buying spree. Now, normally, when it's time for Wall Street big boys to be punished, they have to pay Mistress Electra. Now, like the mistress, the revolutionaries on Reddit are spanking Wall Street's ass because shares of GameStop have risen over 1,700% since December, and by yesterday, it had gone from a market value of $2 billion to $24 billion. And I believe, is this true? We have footage of GameStop's management collecting their earnings. Now, that meteoric rise is a disaster for these big Wall Street hedge funds because here's how shorting works. Let's say you think the price of Beanie Babies is going to crash. It's been a long time since they were hot. So you borrow your friend's Pinchers the Lobster Beanie Baby and sell it on eBay. Your friend isn't upset because you're giving them a dollar, plus you've promised to return a lobster beanie baby to them at some point, and if it goes up instead of down, you'll give them a lot more money as collateral on that beanie baby. You figure no one collects these anymore. You're actually probably going to be able to buy one at a lower price and pocket the difference. But while you're doing this, a group on Reddit collectively decides that beanie babies are valuable and Importantly, they really don't like you. So they decide to buy up all the Beanie Babies. The price explodes. Now you owe your friend a ton of money, which you have to pay in Beanie Babies, which you can't get because Reddit bought them all. So the price goes sky high, which means you owe even more money in even more Beanie Babies, which drives up the price even more. That goes up in a recursive loop, which means you could theoretically lose infinite money. Again, in Beanie Babies, which you know are worthless, which is why you bet against them. 
That's what happened to these hedge funds. So far, GameStop short sellers have lost $5 billion. On the bright side, if any of those hedge fund bros are out of work, I know a place that might be hiring. So Wall Street's not happy. You see, they look down on the rest of us. In fact, on Wall Street, individual investors are often derided as dumb money, not to be confused with the short-lived $4 bill featuring Steve Urkel. And they think it's unfair that someone else gets to bully people with piles of money. As one short seller bitterly put it, I didn't realize it was this cult-like. Those people on Reddit are a total cult. Now, my fellow traders, let us open to the gospel of Adam Smith and then sing today's opening hymn. Clang, 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 GameStop closed down 44%, in part because a lot of companies restricted stock sales, and the trading app Robinhood stopped users from trading GameStop stocks entirely. Yes, exactly what Robinhood is known for. Looking out for the rich guys. Now, hedge funds have also been asking whether Redditors organizing online like this could be considered market manipulation. Oh, you're all for unfettered capitalism unless you lose. Come on, guys, there's no manipulation. This is just the invisible hand of the market extending you an invisible middle finger. What? On the other hand, no one really knows how this is going to end, especially Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Well, I'm understand I'm interesting, isn't it? Um, I understand that the administration is taking a look, the SEC is taking a look at what that is, um, but uh, we'll all be reviewing it, but, but interesting. It's interesting. Yes, that is one way to put it. It certainly grabs the attention that a horde of financial internet gamers has made the bloated plutocrats soil their Hugo bosses because they've managed to unlock the digital pitchfork. But don't worry, hedge fund managers. I'm sure over time, all the money these Redditors accumulate will eventually trickle down to you. You've just got to be patient. And until then, pull yourself up by your cocaine straps. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Vigo Mortensen and New York Times columnist Charles Blow. But when we return, it's meanwhile. Stick around.